Hey everyone, it's Monica from Extraordinary Vacations and I'm here to help you plan your first trip to Animal Kingdom. So let's talk about it. Animal Kingdom is the park with over 2,000 animals and 30 species. There are only eight rides, so the wait times may be a little longer, but there are many other park activities other than the rides you can experience. Walking on paths to see animals, enjoying the exotic food and beautiful surroundings, this park is gorgeous with lush plants, trees, and flowers. They are beautiful and allow for a lot of shade in the park. Animal Kingdom is divided into six lands, the Oasis, Africa, Asia, Discovery Island, Rafiki's Planet Watch, Pandora, and finally, Dinoland USA. There are many paths around the park and lots of room to spread out, so even if the park is busy, it doesn't feel like it. The Oasis is the Main Street USA of Animal Kingdom and the first land guests enter after entering the park. The Oasis has various guest facilities, including locker rentals, stroller rentals, wheelchair rentals, guest relations, and animal exhibits. Exhibits can blend in with your surroundings, so keep your eyes open. Animal Kingdom has a Rainforest Cafe at its entrance, providing a secondary entrance to the park. This restaurant is officially outside the park and you must show tickets again to return to the park after your meal. The maze of paths at the Oasis all lead to Discovery Island, which includes the Tree of Life. Discovery Island is the main hub of Animal Kingdom and is located around the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life is home to It's Tough to Be a Bug and several animal trails. It's Tough to Be a Bug is a 4D adventure starring the cast from A Bug's Life. Many guests, especially those in a hurry, miss the animal trails. Take your time, there's plenty to see here. Rafiki's Planet Watch reached by the Wildlife Train Express. Guests who journey will discover some trails, a conservation section, and a petting zoo. The animation experience at Conservation Station you will learn how real life animals were used as the inspiration to bring your favorites to life. You will even learn how to draw a beloved Disney character. It takes about 10 minutes to get there by the train and there's still a bit of a walking but a neat experience. If you need to waste some time to your next activity, definitely check it out. Africa is home to Kilimanjaro Safaris, a ride-through animal exhibit taking the theme of an African safari vacation. An informative commentary accompanies your ride. No two rides are ever the same. The unexpected could happen, and usually animals are more active in the morning, but evening rides offer a different experience as well. Africa is one of my favorite areas of Animal Kingdom. The immersive theming of the land is outstanding. Festival of the Lion King is a great sing-along with the cast of the Lion King. The Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail is a walk-through exhibit including hippos, meerkats, and of course, gorillas. In Asia, you will find Expedition Everest and Kali River Rapids are the big attractions here. In addition, you will find the Maharaja Jungle Trek. The land is set in fictional kingdom of Anadapur. There are two villages full of old ruins and an odd historic temple. The theme is really beautiful and is centered around animal conservation. Expedition Everest embarks on a thrilling expedition through the Himalayas before coming face to face with the Yeti. A great, fast, thrilling coaster that has a backward section. This ride will close during the afternoon storm, so be sure to ride early in the day. Kali River Rapids is a fantastic raft ride. You will definitely get wet, so store your belongings in the free lockers before you ride. This ride will also close in the afternoon during storm, so try to ride early in the day. And then we have Pandora, the world of Avatar. 
the newest area of Animal Kingdom contains two fantastic attractions. Navi River Journey and Flight of Passage. Make sure you leave plenty of time to explore Pandora and try to visit both during the day and night. Pandora is even more magical at nighttime. And finally, we have Dinoland USA. It contains the Finding Nemo show, Dinosaur, Triceratops Spin, and the Boneyard. Make sure you check the show times for Finding Nemo and arrive early when the park is busy, or use Genie Plus to secure your spot. Also at Dino Land, you have Donald's Dino Bash. You can meet Donald and his friends. This part of the park will be refurbished, although no set date yet when we can expect this to happen. Here are the changes coming to Dino Land. The concept art for this area was shared at D23 in 2023. The land they shared was called the Tropical Americas and can, can include experiences inspired by Indiana Jones, Coco, and Encanto. We haven't gotten much confirmation about these lands yet, but Disney executives did share they are planning to go all in for this expansion. I, for one, can't wait. It's going to be gorgeous. I just know it. For your visit here, here are some things to consider. First, get to know the mobile app, My Disney Experience. You will use it for everything. You can book your lightning lanes, in which I will talk about in a minute, order food, look at show times, and see a whole map of the park. Here's a tip. Study all the food options and menu items ahead of time so by the time you visit the park, no matter what area you are in, you will have an idea of what to eat. This will save you some time. I like to start a list on my phone so I can reference it when I'm at the park. Parking standard versus parking preferred. To me, there's very little difference if you get there early enough. Standard parking is just a little bit farther back than preferred. Preferred, you're almost next to the gate. So if you get there early enough, you're gonna get a great spot with standard parking no matter what. Only one resort is connected to Animal Kingdom. All the rest have to utilize transportation to the park via Disney bus, hotel shuttles, rideshare, or your own vehicle. Here's a look at the transportation drop-off area. Genie Plus is a service to have the ability to book rides called Lightning Lanes, so you don't have to wait in the standby line. Genie Plus saves you time and allows you to explore the park a bit more because you aren't wasting time standing in line. As you open the app, you can look through the Lightning Lanes and see their booking times. The popular rides will book up the fastest. Those are the Avatar rides, both of them, Everest, and the Safaris. But you also have the ability to book character experiences and shows with Genie Plus. The individual lightning lane in the park is called Flight of Passage, the Avatar ride, which is an additional cost that you do not need to purchase Genie Plus to use. Simply purchase the individual lightning lane for Flight of Passage and then book your time to come back to the ride. This will sell out fast, so plan on getting it first thing if you want to purchase it. Resort guests have a 30 minute early entry as well as the ability to book your first lightning lane at 7 a.m. versus when the park opens. Rope drop is a must, meaning you get there before the park is open. You will be surprised at what you could accomplish in the first hour into the park opening. Some people consider Animal Kingdom a half day park or a park hopper park. So they arrive in the afternoon, rides will stay consistently busy throughout the day. You absolutely can bring your own water bottles and snacks into the parks. The strollers at the Disney parks are hard, plastic, and not very comfortable for your little ones. So bring your own or rent one from Kingdom Strollers. They're super reliable. They will drop off and pick up from your hotel. I'll put a link in the comments for you. We use them every trip. For those new mommies, there are baby care stations in each park to allow you to take time with your little one, whether it's feeding or just a little bit of quiet time. I've utilized this a few times with my when my kids were smaller. Let's talk about the dining options at Animal Kingdom. Disney's Animal Kingdom has four table service restaurants. Rainforest Cafe, the restaurant can be entered from both inside and outside the park. Tusker House in Africa offers safari themed character meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
Donald Duck hosts your meal. Yak and Yeti is an Asian themed restaurant and Tiffin's is a signature restaurant that has the Nomad Lounge adjacent to it. Table service locations at Animal Kingdom fill up really fast, so you should arrange an advanced dining reservation prior to your visit. Dining reservations open up 60 days before your visit. There are also a selection of quick service restaurants in the park and various food carts serving a wide range of snacks. This may not be popular opinion, but I don't like to waste my time on table service while at the parks. We save table service or character dining for a day off that doesn't interfere with park time, but you have to decide where you want to spend your time when you are looking at at least an hour and a half to good. table service meetings. I prefer quick service options and mobile ordering while I'm at the park. Mobile ordering, perhaps the most fantastic time saver at Walt Disney World, is ordering your food in advance, quick service restaurants, from your phone. Simply open the app, choose dining, and scroll to the area you are at. Look at quick service restaurants that offer mobile ordering. You can scroll through and see the menu, select a time to come back, and there you go. Your food's ready for you without standing in line. Dining at Animal Kingdom is some of the most unique flavors at Disney World, and only Epcot tends to be a little bit better. But fear not, they will have plenty of options for your picky eaters. I have a few of those. Let's talk about the entertainment at Animal Kingdom. Disney's Animal Kingdom is one of the best parks for entertainment offerings. While there are no longer parades in the park and nighttime offerings have kind of stopped, there are plenty other entertainments you should not miss. There are two fantastic stage shows at Animal Kingdom, both air conditioned if you need to escape the heat. Festival of the Lion King and Finding Nemo, the Big Blue and Beyond musical. Shows can be very popular since there's only two. You must arrive well before your start or book it through Genie Plus. Animal Kingdom is perhaps the best park at Walt Disney World to fall upon unexpected entertainment. You can turn a corner and suddenly run into a street performer or dance party. Let's talk ride heights. Make sure the kids are big enough to ride. Don't create a plan to realize too late not everyone can ride. Disney pretty much enforces these pretty strictly. However, I have an option for you here in a second. At Animal Kingdom, the rides that have height restrictions are Avatar Flight of Passage, 44 inches, Dinosaur, 40 inches, Expedition Everest, at least 44, Kali River Rapids, 38 inches, Primeval War, Whirl, 48 inches. These are all listed in the My Disney app if you forget this. If the kids are too small to ride, it does not mean that adults and older siblings have to skip the ride completely. You have Rider Switch. Rider Switch allows guests with small children to take turns riding while another adult stays with the other child that's small. Simply go talk to one of the cast members at the beginning of the ride, tell them you need a Rider Switch and they will get you set up on your app. The second parent will be able to go right through the Lightning Lane entrance. Also, potential bonus and kind of a secret here, Kids who are able to ride the ride can sometimes ride it both times when the parents switch out. Officially, through Disney, only one kid can ride twice, but we've gotten through a lot of times where both of my kiddos who are tall enough to ride have ridden it both times with both parents. My favorite area to take my kids for some playtime is the Boneyard in Dinoland. It's an open air space designed to look like a dinosaur dig where young paleontologists can play with slides, climbing features, and plenty of space to run around. How to tackle Animal Kingdom efficiently. First, you're gonna buy Genie Plus to book your lightning lanes so that you don't have to wait in standby lines. Then you're gonna rope drop, arrive to the park before it even opens. Most people are going to tell you to map out your day and write it out and have a plan. I am going to have to respectfully disagree. I'm here to tell you, you are never going to look at that plan during the day. You're going to be too busy. Especially if you get Genie Plus, although you're saving time, waiting in lines, you're also on Disney schedule and everybody else's schedule around you booking the lightning lanes at the same time. So what you don't want to do is have a list of the rides you want to ride in the order you want to ride them because that's not going to happen. Either you're going to go by the lightning lane times if you got Genie Plus for the day 
or keep checking those wait times, but you want to prioritize popular rides first thing. Sometimes the ride lines slow down at the end of the day. Book what lightning lanes book up the fastest. First, all the Avatar rides, the Safaris, and Everest go first. Then as you're booking your lightning lanes, you have a little bit of time to sprinkle into things to do the rest of your day in between those times. Go down some animal trails or just enjoy the amazing scenery because it is the most beautiful in the park. And don't forget the food. It is pretty awesome. So I'm telling you to don't map out your day step by step. Effective Disney days always work out when you're flexible, especially since rides can break down at any point and they will, I promise you. And that's out of your control. So then you need to pivot with a backup plan and have backup plans with your backup plans just in case. Stay flexible. I promise you will have a happier day if you relinquish some of the control. So before you head out to Animal Kingdom, research the rides, research the food, pick the shows you want to see, but I promise you will not get it all done in one day. It's too much. You could go to Animal Kingdom four days in a row and have a different day each day. Stay flexible, prioritize your top rides, and then see where the day takes you. It's less stressful and you may happen to run into one of those amazing street artists performance around Animal Kingdom. Some people call this park the Park Hopper Park, but my family spends a whole day here and we're pretty efficient. We get a lot accomplished. At the end of the day, we still have more stuff that we could do. No matter what happens on your day to Animal Kingdom, just enjoy the whole magical experience because once you step foot in that park, your day just improves 100%. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this helps you get an idea of how to plan your day at Animal Kingdom. Have a fabulous vacation and be sure to come back to this video and comment on how your day went. I love to hear it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to check out all my other Disney vacation videos. Have a good day everyone.